sun will stand Made faultless through the land Believing hearts find promise grace Salvation comes Hear heaven's voices sing sister I it's hard to answer on anything but a personal level I know why I would want to be a sister it's because things will eventually fade things break they know they don't fulfill for a moment they fulfill and then it's emptiness again you get a new toy and then you know even as a sister you get a new pair of shoes and that's pretty exciting <laughs> but they get dirty and they wear and all of this passes away, and I think for me, the reason why is because I'm living for eternity, and I can start that now. And there we'll find our home. How do you gain it? How do you gain this joy? How do you gain this peace, you know? And really, it's just it's sitting before our Lord and allowing Him to love you. So it's just something very simple. it when I get off of work and some days are hectic some days are not regardless just to be able to come and to kneel in his presence for me it's like a, a breath of fresh air of when almost in that sense of just renewing I can just let everything go and just be in his presence closest friends I've ever had in community because it goes beyond the externals. You know, it's not what car do you drive, it's not where do you work, it's who you love. And we love the same person and we're directed towards the same goal. And we can share our hearts. And so, you know, it's not, the externals don't matter so much anymore. And I think that's the beauty of community, being able to grow on this, this way towards Him together. to start thinking about our names and nothing was coming, nothing was coming. And I thought, you know, there's so many wonderful saints I could take from the saints. I really love languages though. And so I'm reading scripture and Mark 5, 41, Jesus raises the daughter of Jairus and he goes in and he takes her by the hand and he says, 
Talitha Kum, or some people say Talitha, either way. It's Aramaic, it's his very own language, and it means little girl. So he was saying, little girl, get up. And I really, really liked that. I thought, there's no way. It's such a strange name, you know, it's Aramaic, and they're never gonna say yes. So I am talking to my postulant director, and, and she says, yeah, yeah, I like that. So then she looks it up in her little dictionary, and I asked for it, and there was not even a question. They're like, yes, that's fine. And But more importantly behind that is, I love the fact of the story that Jesus comes in, and I picture myself as that little girl dead in my sin. And he comes in and he grabs me by the hand and he says, get up. And we walk together that way every day. Living in community life is, it, it's a joy, it's a blessing, and it could be a a good way that the Lord helps to purify you, you know. Um, I live in a house of about 20 sisters right now, and we can range from 20 years old up to 70 or 80. It just, okay, that in itself is really God's grace and a miracle that all these women can live together. And so I think, you know, part of the joy though of, of religious life is living together in community. You have the support of your sisters, you, you're working towards the same goal, um, but we've got lots of different personalities and we, we rub against one another, but that's what helps us to, to continually be reformed and conformed to Christ. And I think we help one another do that. I feel fulfilled beyond what I could even express. Yeah. Again, just, it, it's it's something quite amazing where um, words can't always put it into context, but um, if I was like a bouncy ball, I'd be like bouncing all over the place. You know, it just, that's what's inside because you can't contain it. Like God will never stop giving. I'll never stop understanding him. And you know, he's calling me to, to experience his love and to give his love. And that is like inexhaustible. And so it's just, it's constantly coming and I'm constantly giving and it, it's like never ending, you know, and that's what's going to happen. Hopefully one day when we get to heaven, but as far as being fulfilled, I, knowing how God has called me to this vocation in life and it was meant specifically for me and how he made me up with all my personality and details and and quirks and habits it it's it fits like a glove and this is what this is what's meant for me and so I think any vocation you have in life if you find it it it's going to be totally fulfilling because it's what God specifically had in mind when he created us from day one I've gained a lot of peace in religious life, um, just peace within my heart. It's, you know, it's funny because to know that you're called to religious life, it's something that isn't always necessarily a feeling, but just like the Lord is having a sense of the Lord pursuing you, you know, and he's pursuing you with love. And sometimes we can fight against that. And sometimes we are like, okay, Lord, I'll submit to your love. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's really a hard question to answer because everyone has a different experience of that call. Like for me, I just, I felt peace within my heart. I felt joy. And sapphire skies.
Dankeschön. This is the place where we all pray, all the sisters, sometimes people who come to us. And we have masses here, we pray the liturgy of the hours, the prayer of the church. All to
for everything we could do for others and for everything others have done to us. And afterwards, after the evening prayer, we've got Eucharistic adoration, usually, and the center of it is Eucharistic Jesus in the tabernacle. Eucharistic Jesus became the first in my heart person who bring me closer to him and think what is my vocation about. This tabernacle, I can see the life Eucharist which is the center of every Doctors of Divine Charity. Uh, Mother Mary is a person who teach us how to love and suffer and accept God's will for us. Every Sunday we've got um, sharing from the Sunday Bible. scripture, from the Sunday scriptures from the Bible. We always share between each other at this table what really touched us, the word of God and, and how it changes our hearts. If you'd ask me at university write down your wish list, I pretty much had it and yet there seems something else that, that I really wanted more than all this other stuff that I thought I had wanted and yet there were some pretty painful and scary hurdles to um, go through to, to get there. There are three, three vows, you have poverty, chastity and, and obedience and I think the, the attitudes of my friends um, when they hear about your taking those vows is um, life must be over now, you know, coming to an end, I cannot imagine what a terrible existence with these three things. And, and clearly there are sacrifices in them, but there's, there's also a great liberation with them. There is a high um, obedience is, is, is actually probably less than actually going to an office each day and having somebody tell you to do these 
tiny little sort of chores that, that you think are pointless and actually our, our obedience is in order to, to serve the church and it's more an obedience to our way of life than a, an obedience to an individual who's just telling you to do stuff all the time. I think with poverty the key thing is not being overly attached to possessions and things that are going to get in the way of your relationship with God. And I think I became aware of that as I was packing to go into the novitiate, actually the, the hold that some of my possessions had over me. Um, and so that was a valuable lesson in the importance of, of the vow of poverty. Poverty is our freedom and our strength. This, there is two kinds of poverty. We have the poverty of material, like for example, uh, in some places like in India and Ethiopia and Yemen and other places where the people are hungry for a loaf of bread, a real hunger, but there is much deeper, much greater uh, hunger and that is the hunger for love uh, and that terrible loneliness and uh, being unwanted, unloved. I think actually the, the biggest thing that you're aware of is, is that actually you're, you're giving up the opportunity of, of intimacy with, with that special person and actually it's more than, than actually sexual relations, it's, it's, a, it's a somebody who is your, your immediate confidant, somebody who gives you that caress, holds your hand um, and, and there, there, is, there is a gap there. You feel that, that gap and this longing for love and to be loved that you have with, with Christ and pour that out on other people. And I, I think you're, you're kidding yourself if you think that actually celibacy is just an easy thing and you just ignore it. Um, it's another way of living, but ultimately if it doesn't make you more loving, um, then, then it's going to have a negative effect. And I think it's, it's using finding ways to use those energies in a, in a more sort of loving way generally for other people and also to deepen your relationship with Christ. It is a very structured lifestyle, so we follow a timetable. Um, the life is actually very balanced. The time's divided into little blocks of silent, solitary prayer, of prayer as a community together, praying the Divine Office. We have Mass every day, but in between we work and we try and work alone and in silence wherever that's possible. In many ways it's actually a very normal life, that the, the tasks of everyday life for a big group of people are, are there and need doing. But we try and keep a climate of prayer and of silence and of reflection so we're not distracted by background music, by TV, we don't talk outside of specific times unless necessary. It's a life apart from the busyness of life in the world. Not because we're rejecting that, but because we actually need the freedom to live this life of prayer more intensely. I think the church, and in fact the world, need there to be communities of people who live apart as we do and make ourselves more available to God. People that don't take on other commitments um, so that we can be more free to focus on the life of prayer. We're not doing it for our own spiritual perfection. We're not doing it to sort of climb to the top of the ladder on our own. We believe that prayer actually affects the whole world. And incredible though it seems, any one person open to God in prayer is somehow giving God a way into helping and healing the world because God's chosen to involve people in the world. It's the kind of graciousness of God that he wants us to help him. Um, it's not saying that we're any better at prayer than anybody else. But we've got the privilege of a life that we and without that belief in the effectiveness of
Show yourself in praise. Let the church fall. For glory, wisdom, power, strength, thanks, and honor to God our King who reigns on high forevermore. And there we'll find vocation is a belonging to Christ. The work is only a means to put our love for Christ into action. Lord